Hey guys, Casey here. Um, thank you for tuning back in. I tried to film this video the other day and it didn't work because when I went to plug in my SD card for some reason, um, it wouldn't let me pull the footage on to the editing software I use. So that was a big pain in the you know what because I've had to refilm it different SD card, hopefully, um, it should work. Um, and also I apologize now for the lack of video last week. Um, last weekend I was doing some, like, charitable stuff, um, and the weekend just kind of got away from me a little bit, and I carved out time to do this video, and then that time kind of, like, got dispersed into a million different things um but there will be two videos this weekend today and then one tomorrow so this video i wanted to do because now they're getting down to the pretty much week countdown now it's like two days to halloween i wanted to run you guys through my top not five not ten but top 13 favorite horror movies slash halloween -y movies that I kind of like to watch at this time. Some of them are full on horror, some of them are not, some of them are just fun halloween -y movies that I really enjoy. So because this list is kind of long, I'm just going to get right to it. Um, number 13 is the movie Hush. Now, if you or someone has Netflix, I'm not sure if this movie was ever released anywhere other than Netflix, or if it was a Netflix original, but Hush is um, about a deaf writer who kind of lives in the woods, and one night she's trying to finish this, and she has like really bad writer's block, she's trying to finish her book, and she starts kind of getting stalked by this guy who realizes that she's deaf, and I would say a good 85 to 90 percent of this movie is completely silent because she's deaf and it just makes it that much more suspenseful because like you're waiting but there's no music to like cue you into what's going on so it's really suspenseful very very good um I don't remember who plays the main character but I think she's amazing and I think the guy's amazing and it's all around a great movie Number 12, Skeleton Key. Um, now this movie came out a long time ago. I was probably around 16, 17 when this came out. So it's been, it's been a hot minute. Um, I was a teenager when this came out. And it's with Kate Hudson and I believe Kathy Bates. And Kate Hudson plays a caregiver in New Orleans. And the family that she's caregiving for is a family that used to practice hoodoo, which is similar to voodoo but darker i think um and she just kind of gets like drawn into this world of weird stuff going on and trying to stop it and figure it out and it's a really good movie once again kind of like the first movie it's more suspenseful than actually horror or scary which i prefer i prefer to be sus like the suspenseful movies over like the gore and the blatantly just horror um as someone who has spent time in the South, I really appreciate this movie because I got major landmarks in it because it's New Orleans. I got like the whole importance of the voodoo and voodoo culture in that area of the United States. So once again, I also really recommend this one. Seven, Children of the Corn. Once again, I don't remember who makes this movie and you guys are probably screaming at me. Um, Children of the Corn was a very, very big movie for me. It's one of the first movies that was blatantly horror that I saw. And at the same time, I saw it with a friend who was not phased by horror movies at all. At all. Not one thing scared her. And me, I was terrified. Because it's a terrifying movie. Um, and then like a week after, after I saw this movie, we actually went on a road trip with her parents, and we passed a sign that was the same town as the movie, and I like literally was like, okay. And I think I said the entire trip, like convinced it was a town 
Now granted, I was like 13 or 14, um, but if you have never seen Children of the Corn, it's about these kids in this town that kill off the adults and run the town, and this adult realizes and tries to stop it, and it's creepy. The kids are creepy, and it's kind of slasher in the beginning, and then kind of fades, I don't know um, how to really explain it. But if you are a cult classic horror fan, then you've probably seen this movie. Number 10, Pet Cemetery. This cannot be a list of horror Halloween movies without a Stephen King. Pet Cemetery, like the like Children of the Corn, is a very identifying movie for me because when I was in high school, I used to hold like Friday night movie nights at my house, and me and all my friends would get together, we'd pick horror movies, and we watched Pet Cemetery a shit ton. And it was creepy in the sense that it's mind working because like the people come back and it's like the ancient burial ground idea. And the little boy in the movie is downright scary on um, Gage. And I think everyone in that movie did a fantastic job as actors and actresses. And at the same time, it was very chilling because it's kind of like, you knew what was going to happen, but you didn't want to have it, especially at the end when he's just kind of like sitting there waiting. If you haven't seen this movie, I highly recommend it. Um, I also saw it at summer camp um, one year when we were older, and it's become one of my all-time favorites. And I wish it was on more than it is, but it's usually not, so that's another good one. Number nine, Adam's Family. Adam's Family 1 and 2. These movies... Um, I grew up with because my parents grew up watching like the original Adams Family like the Munsters and I grew up loving Morticia and Wednesday and Pugsley and Fester and Cousin It and I love these movies. I think Christina Ricci in them is amazing. I think Joan Cusack in that one where she plays Fester's Psycho X is amazing and at the end of the day I think my favorite one I think is the second one when they send Pugsley and Wednesday to the happy summer camp and they do the drowning thing and Wednesday's just so like nonchalant and now I'm just like, you drown, go. I'm just gonna stand here because I'm Wednesday Adams. Um, so these come on around this time on ABC Family on the 13 days of Halloween and I definitely TiVo, not TiVo but like, record them so I could watch them, so, and the family. Number eight, Casper. Now, some of you are probably thinking, why does this movie make your cut? Because it's a kid movie, and you're right. Casper came out when I was like nine or ten, and again, it's also with Christina Ricci. Um, but I just love this movie. Um, it was the first time I was introduced to Devin Sawa as an actor, who was later in one of my other favorite movies, which I didn't put in here, but it's the, um, Final Destination movies. He's in, I think, the first and the second one. Um, and I love this movie, and I think it's so sad because Casper's situation is very sad. It was just kind of, when he's explaining to her, and it was just like, it, I, I think from what I got from the movie, it was either a cold or the flu. That, and he just got too sick. Um, but he's trying to become human, and at the end, he becomes human and dances with her. It just, it, it's all the feels. It, it gives me all the feels, so. If you haven't seen Casper, it doesn't matter how old you are, go see it, please, because you won't regret it. Number seven, The Shining, another Stephen King. Stephen King is one of my favorites. Um, the Shining, to me, I saw with my parents and my brother, and I didn't understand the movie until I was older. I didn't understand the concept. I didn't get what The Shining was. I didn't get that in the movie. It was like an ability that Danny had, like, receive things and see ghosts or whatever. I didn't get that. So I was, like, younger and just didn't care. Now, I think it's one of the all-time best horror movies. Um, it's just amazing. I think Jack Nicholson and the little boy and the mom more plays the mom I think is great. There are some parts of the movie I still don't get, like the bunny. The bunny I don't get. Um, but I absolutely love that movie. The twins in it still scare me to death. 
Um, and I don't get scared of much anymore because I've become a huge lover of horror and scary movies. But the twins are just so good. They're so creepy. And he's riding the big one, the twins are corner, they're just there. Um, that still gets me every time. I'm like, that's chilling. Um, so if you haven't seen The Shining, I recommend it. It's not horror, but it's like mine because it's like cabin fever-ish. So go see that if you haven't. It's amazing. Disclaimer, for those of you who watch my videos when you're younger, do not watch any of these without your parents' permission. Just saying. Number six, The Sixth Sense. The Sixth Sense I watched for the first time with my aunt and uncle, and I, once again, was in the situation that I was probably like 10 or 11, and I didn't get the movie, and now that I've seen it a million times and I'm older, it's amazing. Unfortunately, um, I feel like M. Night Shyamalan has not done another movie to top the Sixth Sense. I think Signs was very close. Signs is amazing, uh, but The Sixth Sense was just so brilliantly done that I don't know how you could top it because it was so good. Just, just Haley Joel Osment and Bruce Willis and all the actors and I didn't realize that Misha Barton was a little girl under the bed and I just think that whole side of it was amazing. Um, and I like that there's red throughout it and it's meant to be like a safe thing, I think. Because like, um, Cole's tent is red, the balloon is red, um, like everything. I think it's meant to be a safety thing, like the door handle on uh, Bruce's office is red. And I just really ultimately loved that movie once I got to appreciate it. So I think everyone's seen that actually. It's kind of like a well-known thing. Five. Friday the 13th, I have to put this in because it's my top 13. Friday the 13th, I thought was amazing. I, I mean, obviously I thought all these movies were amazing, that's why they made the list. Friday the 13th, um, to me, was just an old, good, solid slasher horror movie. It's a classic, kind of like Freddy Krueger and, um, all that stuff it's just amazing my favorite part of the movie is that it takes place at a camp and that you don't understand or not that you understand you understand what's happening obviously people are getting killed off this kid what I think is amazing is that you it, it's it's you don't it's kind of like Jaws in the sense of you see them happening but you don't know who it is and it flips to like the killer's perspective and and people know the killer like like one of the ending things that really gets you is she like the killer kills one of the um staff and he's talking to her like a friend and then all of a sudden he she just kills him and then the camera turns and you see who it is and you realize it's the owner of the camp and you're like whoa and then it goes in the whole story of Jason and he drowned at the camp and the counselors were doing inappropriate things and that's why no one was watching him. And I like that. I like that you saw the killings from like her perspective and it wasn't her. And I like that it was a girl and not a guy until the end when Jason becomes Jason and he becomes whatever because she dies. Um, spoiler alert. I like that. I like that it was her perspective for some of it and that people knew who she was and it was just okay and then all of a sudden it wasn't. So go see Friday the 13th that I'm sure most people have. Number four, Halloween. Woo, woo. Halloween I saw for the first time in Galena with my best friend at the time and she still is one of my really good friends. Um, and we were watching it and her friend, we were staying in her like neighbor's house and her neighbor's son had gone on to the side of the house and I don't know if he, I don't know what he took with him, but he took a metal something, was scraping it against the side of the house as a joke. And we're watching him and all of a sudden, like, we finished it, we're like, that was really good. Michael Myers. And then just like, like, crossed across the house, we were like, <gasps> like, it was one of those things where literally everything aligned, we had just finished, it was creepy as hell. Um, Michael Myers is an interesting character to me. Um, I don't fully get it. I don't fully get the whole um, thing. I mean, I do, but the first movie I think is, is interesting because, I mean, he, he clearly has an issue with his sister. And, 
And the clown suit and him being little, um, I just thought was really creepy. It just adds to it, so. It's a classic, just like Friday the 13th and The Shining. Um, so, I'm sure you guys have all seen it. Three! Um, three is kind of another basic one. It's Goosebumps. Now, if you are a kid from the 90s, you will understand that Goosebumps, if you were little at that time, I mean, I was born on the end of the 80s and, like, right at the cusp of the 80s and 90s. Um, like, right there, like, I was, like, the very, very end of the 80s. So when I was, like, seven and it was, like, 98, um, and I was watching those, you gotta understand, for a, for a seven-year-old, some of those movies are scary. The Haunted Mask, Girl of the Fever Swamp, those are actually legit scary for my age. Same with the show, Are You Afraid of the Dark? I see some of those now on YouTube, and I'm like, some of them are really lame, and I'm like, wouldn't be even terrified even if I was like five. And other ones, I'm like, holy shit. Why would you put that on a kid's show? But I liked it. It's like kitty horror. Kitty horror is the perfect way to describe it. Because it wasn't horror, but it was scary enough that like, if you're like 10, 11, it gave you a little bit of a fright, kind of not. Um... But also, if you read the books, I mean, the books were books, um, but the movies were, like, were a little freaky if you were little. Now, I get a kick out of them because they're on Netflix, and I'm like, oh my god, this is so 80s and in Canada. Because I feel like the Goosebumps and Are You Afraid of the Dark were all done in Canada and not in the U.S. Because Are You Afraid of the Dark is on Netflix in Canada, U.S. Can we please get it? Because that was my favorite shows. And also put Legends of the Hidden Temple on there while you're at it. I digress. Um, number two. Now, this is a two movie deal because they're from the same director and I feel like they're both amazing and it's Nightmare Before Christmas and The Corpse Bride. Both Tim Burton, both genius. Corpse Bride, to me, I think, next to Sweeney Todd, is one of the more outlandish, kind of like really kind of creepy ones because, I mean, he marries the corpse and gets taken to the underworld. There's the whole idea that if you watch, if you've seen it, you'll know that she was lured in by this man, promised to be married, and then on her wedding night, he murders her. And he's free. He was never caught, whatever. And she then makes a vow when she's dead that whoever places a ring on her finger, like, whatever will be her true love. So this guy who is getting married to someone else is running away from the wet, is like running away pretty much from like his life and everything and puts the ring on what he thinks is a branch that's actually for hands. And this whole movie goes on and then you hear the story of her and it's just sad and it's weird and it's creepy. And at the end, he gets his what he deserves. Um, and the corpse bride is just really good. I love it. But if if I had to be a favorite, it would be Nightmare Before Christmas only because it came out first and Nightmare Before Christmas was the first Tim Burton movie that I was ever allowed to watch because they're so kind of weird. Um, and I fell in love with it. I fell in love with Jack and Sally and the mayor and the doctor and like Santa Claus and Oogie Boogie. And I think it'll always have a very special place in my heart. Um, I actually have a Jack Skellington doll that's like this big, which I need to get out and put on my bed. But he's currently um, in the garage with my other seasonal stuff, which I need to get out. Because I haven't really decorated very much except my back window. Um, but Nightmare Before Christmas is amazing and I love it. One movie, number one. My all-time favorite movie is... Hocus Pocus. I have met people who have never seen Hocus Pocus, and I'm like, are you crazy? How have you not seen this movie? It's on multiple times every year at this time. Like, at least every day it's on at some point. And it's a classic. Omari Katz, and Thora Birch, and Bette Midler, and Sarah Jessica Parker, and it's amazing. I mean, it, who doesn't love a good Salem Witch movie? There are inaccuracies. I get it. But... At the end of the day, it's a really good movie. I get a kick out of watching it now. My best friend Melissa does too. And I just think I, I actually 
really love the song that Sarah Jessica Parker sings in Garden of Magic. And I, I, it's so catchy and legit. I love that movie. It's one of my all-time favorites that I've before. If you guys like these movies, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to comment with your favorite Halloween movie or scary movie, whatever, or your favorite movie in general. Um, leave comments below. I would love to know what you guys like to watch, ideas, new movies. If you guys have seen another movie that's horrifying and scary, leave, again, comment. I'll maybe watch it. I love discovering new movies, new everything. So, if you've got a movie, put it down below, and I'll be sure to check it out. And once again, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to both my channels. I have my main channel, this one, and my vlogging channel, which will be in the description box. If you like to see my day activities, which are not day to day, they are probably on weekends. So, if you'd like to check that out, please do. Um, I appreciate every comment, every like, every thumbs up, every subscriber I have. So, please check back for more videos I upload every week, um, for the most part. And I will see you guys later. Bye.